everybody. Uh, what's going on? Welcome to Fill in the Food. Today we're gonna uh, make a really simple salad and really what we're gonna talk about is making a vinaigrette. A vinaigrette, of course, is a simple dressing, typically a vinegar and some type of acid and a little bit of oil, but very simple and easy to do. I'm also gonna highlight some ingredients that I've talked about both in my Instagram feed uh, and that are great this time of year, uh, most namely seltzer, so we'll get to that in a second. So. Join me, uh, you can see the recipe below, uh, and we would love to have you follow along. Let us know if you make this salad and how it comes out. If you can't find any specific ingredients that we're talking about, that's the beauty of this, is that you can use these techniques and plug and play what you can find and what you do have at home. So, get out and shop local, buy what looks best, buy what you're inspired to both eat and cook with, uh, and get started from there. So, let's talk about salad. I'm gonna start my salad today with some beautiful baby arugula. This baby arugula is so tender and peppery and lovely and nice. It's gonna be absolutely delicious for us today. Uh, and so it's gonna be a really great moment. Uh, this is gonna be the base of our salad. And today I'm just gonna kind of put ingredients on top. I'm just making salad for me at dinner time. And so I have no need to get a big bowl and toss everything together. When we're working in the restaurant, we usually talk to people and talk to young cooks about always dressing a salad. Today, simple dressing right over the top since we have such little is gonna be fine. So a bed of baby arugula to start with, and that's gonna be a good moment. Then I've got this beautiful celtus. Celtus is uh, basically the core of a type of green that kind of grows on top, but the green isn't really used. The leaves are kind of wimply and piddly, and so it's really the core that we want to work with. It's crispy and crunchy and makes a great addition to salad. Think of a, a texture between cucumber and radish without the peppery spiciness of the radish, uh, without the sweetness of the cucumber. It's a little uh, more of a filler, but it's got that great crunch that every salad needs. So that's going to be a great option. Today we're going to use, of course, some little summer squash zucchini. That would be great. Earlier in a video, we showed you how to make supremed oranges. Uh, and these are so yummy and great and tender. I had some of these left over from that demo, so it's time to put them in the salad. And now I get to eat them, which is my favorite part. We are coming into the midsummer months here in California, it's the start of June, and starting to crop up everywhere is the wild fennel that uh, we're so known for here on our hiking trails and by the roadsides. And by my walking trail uh, uh, every day, I've been walking by as these fennel plants are cropping up, and so I grab some. Just as this is starting to go to flower, you can see that it's really uh, delicious and amazing. Uh, this is what we call the fennel pollen, when the tops just start to flower. Uh, in Italy, they call us Fiore di Fenocchio and it's a very highly prized uh, and it just has a really pungent beautiful aroma and flavor so that's all gonna go in there we're also gonna feature a cheese uh, from a dairy called bivalve dairy this cheese is called engine 228 it's cow's milk cheese um, but any cheese you have at home should be good you could use feta or goat's milk a fresh goat cheese uh, goat's milk cheese even Parmesan or Pecorino, but of course we like to support local. Bivalve Dairy has legit products and uh, we love using this, their Engine 228. So that's basically it. We've got a couple other things we'll talk about as we go along. Again, uh, you'll see the recipe below, so check that out. Time to get go. Gotta get a couple things. Let's start with our Celtus. This is probably the thing you have no idea about or you may not have seen. Uh, and again, I picked this up at the farmer's market. We got this today at Star Route Farms here in Northern California, the first organic farm in America. How amazing is that? Each week I get to shop at a farm that uh, it can legitimately be called one of the first, if not the first, organic farm in America. So really cool. So the way I work with this is I'm gonna trim this and cut this in half. Uh, uh, I wanna use uh, this in lengths that are about the size of my hand so nothing gets out of control. That's a great tip for home cooks. Don't be cutting with anything that's too, too big. Uh, I stand this up and I wanna trim away the outer bits around the outside. Now, um, uh, if you if you had a bomb, anything like my mom, my mom would never throw away the broccoli stems. She would always do this to the broccoli stems and would cut it up and we would complain drastically about that. Um, but she would always eat it and she talked about how great they were. Of course, mom is always right. And uh, I grew to love the broccoli stem eventually, but um, uh, I deal with this cell too so much the same way. Once you have that those outer woody bits around the outside trimmed away, then you have that tender middle these can go away into the compost like so. And I'm gonna grab a mandolin. Not the tiny guitar, of course. I'm talking about the slicing tool that is such a great moment. And so I'm just gonna slice these into thin ribbons. Watch your fingers. No injuries, please. He says as he almost injures himself. Nice and thin. 
that's gonna get me what I need for today, so that's gonna be good. So I'm gonna grab my salad here and just start to incorporate these on top. Now again, you can shred these down. If you don't have a mandolin, just slice this thin with a knife. You could do this in rounds, that would be fine. Um, and I'm just kind of putting everything on top because it's a relatively small salad. This is just a side salad. If you wanted to make this a bigger salad, then you certainly could bulk all of this up and have lots more goodies in there. Uh, I only need probably half of this summer squash, if even that much. And I'm just gonna chop this kind of thin. I love raw summer squash and zucchini in my salads. It's so delicious. It just, again, provides that little bit of sweetness. And when you have a salad like this, that already has a couple of nice flavorful ingredients, the cheese, we're gonna do some of that citrus in there, then you don't have to have so many big, full flavored ingredients going into the salad. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind. You don't wanna have too many lead vocalists in the salad, that's for sure. So that's good. All right, back to the citrus suprems that we had done for you earlier in the week. We showed you how to do that. Absolutely delicious. These are some Cara Cara oranges. We're coming to the tail end here of citrus season, and uh, these are so yummy, and this is really gonna provide such a pop of flavor, uh, along with that fennel. Uh, citrus and fennel, such a great combination. I'm gonna save that little bit of extra juice with some juice that I squeezed earlier, and that's gonna go become part of our dressing, so that's important to note. Now. Talking of dressing, I'm gonna set this aside. If you wanted to do red onion, radishes, thinly sliced asparagus, all of that in here would be absolutely delicious and fine. But for me, I'm gonna keep it again simple. I'm having a little steak to go with this and so that should be good. I'm gonna pull up my fennel pollen and now I wanna get all those little bits off the top. It's so pungent and amazing. You know, back east, uh, before I moved to California, we would spend about $30 an ounce for fennel pollen, Fiore de Finocchia, that, that little yellow top um, uh, once that goes to flower because it's so pungent and delicious and amazing. And so I just pull these uh, from uh, the little flower pods from the top, um, you can dry this I, I tend to go through and dry um, several cups worth of this and that usually gets me through the year it's probably my favorite uh, seasoning to use so it's always exciting when we're starting in on fennel season uh, uh, and so and again uh, if you're growing fennel in a garden and you uh, once you've harvested some and you want to let some go to flower and go to seed that would be ideal um, if you're here uh, in the Northwest uh, or in the mid -we western mid Central West, I don't know what they call it. I, I live in Northern California. If you're somewhere around there and there's wild fennel growing, harvest the fennel pollen uh, and it's gonna be delicious. I'll just run through this quickly with my knife since this is fresh. If this was dried, of course, this would be a little bit more crumbly, but it is pretty fresh. And that's pretty, that's a pretty good amount. This stuff is really, really pungent, so I probably won't need all of that. Okay, let's make a dressing. In a bowl, you could do, that would be fine, with a whisk. But I'm gonna make this a little bit more simple today. When I'm making a small amount of dressing at home, I just use a jar. I'm a single guy, I live by myself. Tell your friends. And so, we keep it simple. So, here we go, let's make some dressing. I start with my jar, I go in with my orange juice from earlier. This was left over from making my segments earlier today, uh, and isn't necessarily needed, but I like the flavor profile to reinforce the oranges that I've put into my salad. That orange juice is a little bit sweet though, so I'm gonna add a little bit of rice wine vinegar. This is seasoned rice wine vinegar, it has a little bit of sugar, has a little bit of extra salt added to it, uh, and so that's gonna be yummy. I wanna make an emulsified vinaigrette, and what that means is is you've always heard your whole life that oil and water don't mix, right? Well, with a vinaigrette, we want to get them to mix. We want to emulsify them. Eventually, though, they will separate. Think of Italian dressing in the grocery store. It separates into layers. And that's because that water and oil eventually realize they don't mix and they, they break apart. Unless we add an emulsifier, in this case, a little Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard has a compound called lecithin in it. And lecithin has one little arm that grabs onto the water components and one little arm that grabs onto the oil components and it grabs them both and it doesn't ever let go. And so, a couple of drops of that. Now, I don't want this to be a mustard vinaigrette. I don't love the flavor of mustard in my dressings usually. So I'm just gonna add the smallest amount, a half a teaspoon, maybe. Uh, and so just a little bit. And if you don't wanna add any mustard or you don't have it, it's okay. Just know that you're gonna have to whisk and shake your dressing right before adding it. Otherwise, it's not gonna be emulsified. You're either gonna get the oil layer or the vinegar layer uh, or the acid layer rather. 
uh, and not a good mixture of both. So that's why I like to add the mustard, it helps. Now, I also wanna make sure that I add my salt into my acid, and that is because Salt is water soluble, not oil soluble. And that means that if I add it once the oil's been in there, it's not gonna dissolve quite as well. So I always add my salt, in this case kosher salt as always for me, uh, into my acid. Let's get a bunch of that fennel in there as well. We'll set some aside, I chopped a lot. I don't, I don't need quite that much. That's all good. I'm gonna skip pepper because I don't have it close by. Not a problem. Okay, now I need a little bit of oil to make my vinaigrette. Now for a classic vinaigrette, the classic ratio is three parts oil to one part acid. But my acid here isn't very strong and I don't need that quite so oily. If I was using champagne vinegar or red wine vinegar or sherry vinegar, I would probably be closer to that three part oil and one part acid ratio. And here's where the, the rubber hits. If you don't like it so acidic, then you can be at that level. But if you have a softer vinegar and you still need it to be balanced, I can go as low as one to one acid to oil. Um, I'm gonna be somewhere around one part acid to one and a half parts oil today, uh, just to make sure that I have a good flavor. The oil is of course extra virgin. No men have even walked through the, that's extra virgin jokes. Um, Never mind, but extra virgin olive oil has a great flavor and this is gonna be awesome. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. Again, no need to measure. About one to one and a half. That seems about right, I don't know. We're gonna taste this and if it's not good, we'll fix it. It's gonna be okay though. We've only got a couple ingredients. Okay, lid goes on and we shake. Now again, you can do this in a bowl if you're making a big massive amount or more or if you wanted to do a little bit more. But for me, I'm just making a little bit for me. And then if I have extra, it's already in the container that uh, I could store it in if I need to. All right, check out our dressing there. See how creamy and cloudy that is? That tells me that we have a great emulsification. We know we've reached a proper emulsification with a couple of different variables here. Number one, if we have a mixture that is thicker than the sum of its two parts, the oil was thin, the vinegar was thin, in this case our orange juice with, with rice wine vinegar, that was thin, but when we emulsify them, we get a slightly thickened liquid that is thicker than either of those two would be on their own. So that's hint number one that we're done. Number two, that oil was relatively clear, so was our vinegar, and then our orange juice was relatively clear as well, but our liquid here is very opaque. That also tells me that we have reached a good emulsion. So, I've got that shaking up, ready to go. I wanna give it a taste. All I have is big spoons. I'm not gonna take that big of a taste. Oh, it's perfect, but you know what? It's close to perfect. I want just a little bit more acid. This is quite sweet from the lemon juice, or from the orange juice. All right, so a quick adjust. It's an important thing when you're cooking off the cuff without a recipe that you taste as you go and you make little adjustments. There is no shame to that game at all. It's very important. And there are always gonna be variables between the ingredients that you use, even if you're working with a standard recipe. So make sure that you take your time and that you really uh, uh, taste as you're cooking through. All right, let's bring our salad back. A little bit of salt over the top. I always season my salad, just a little bit of kosher salt, good to go. And that dressing, just drizzled, booyah. Look at that. That looks like summertime on a plate, don't you think? And again, radishes here. So yummy, I like my salads extra dressed. And for cheese, I'm just gonna use a little vegetable peeler. This is one of these little Y peelers from Kuhn Raikon. We love these. Uh, chefs everywhere love these. These are kind of like the official uh, vegetable peeler of chefs everywhere. They're so sharp, you gotta be careful. I've seen more injuries with these. These and mandolins, giving everything a run for the money. And so, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful salad? It's gonna go great with my steak, don't you think? And so, here we have it. A great late summer salad with arugula, a great vinaigrette with wild fennel, rice wine vinegar, that orange juice, citrus supremes, and saltus. What a fun vegetable. 
If you like our video, please click the subscribe button down below. Check out our website, fillinthefood.com. You can follow us on Instagram, fillinthefood, uh, as well as my personal Instagram, Tony with an extra Y, one, three. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks.